Hi everyone, this is Metal Stash, and for today, I have brought you a video that is going over the economy of my RTS game. Uh, I've gone over so far the player, the player's GUI, units, buildings, and now I'm kind of working on the flow of how each one of them reacts and uh, you know how they connect, because that's kind of how uh, an economy. Uh, works where you know the player tells units to go get resources and then those units store those resources into buildings and there's a whole flow and connection between those two uh, during this whole process uh, I know it's been a while since I've had a video but that's because I have been uh, busy doing other things and kind of I guess I uh, having my mind go other places, playing games, things like that, I, I don't know, I, I just haven't, I guess, I found the I drive to work on it in a little while, but I'm kind of trying to get back into it, I, I'm actually going to be going back to school in about a month, so um, that'll be interesting to see what happens there, um, but back to the whole economy thing. Uh, I found a really cool way to uh, store uh, string names where you can search them easily and figure out if that uh, table or, well, I, I just revealed it, it's a hash table, uh, can store keys and values and that key can be a string. So you can store uh, things by a string index instead of normally just an integer index. So that is one of the cool things that I found. Um, the way I kind of found it though was uh, by playing a an alternative to Minecraft called Mind Test. Uh, I started doing a couple of mods for that, and they use tables quite a bit. So I kind of learned from uh, programming in Lua. Uh, it's another programming language, so I'm kind of just branching out in different places and learning different things because I can take them to any uh, any place. So uh, let's let's get into the project because I think I've talked about other stuff long enough. Um, in the actual scene, we don't have a lot that is different. The only thing that might look weird is we have a strange sphere-looking thing. It's like a cone head. We got the aliens of the cone heads coming to invade the game. Uh, now this is actually a uh, resource stockpile or. Uh, in my game, it's going to be uh, hard drive resources, so it's going to be uh, bytes and kilobytes and stuff like that. So uh, your units will go out, they'll gather those resources and bring them back to buildings that are capable of storing those resources. So what I've done is uh, in a building, there's a couple of things that have been added. Uh, you can check the building if it is resource capable and then you can define which resources it is allowed to store there. Um, they aren't necessarily stored at the building though. All it really amounts to is, is this unit able to bring back this resources to this building to transfer it to the player to then use everywhere else. So it's not like if the building is destroyed the, the resources are lost because that would be really obnoxious. Um, so the way you define what uh, resources you can take, it's just a string value. So as long as you define a resource name, it, the same everywhere, uh, a unit can gather that resource and take it to a building and store it to the player by just the string value. And then you have an integer, integer amount uh, according to that string value. But see, you can't modify hash tables within the inspector so I have to use string and integer arrays to then store those values in key and value uh, pairs so that's how I've done it. Um, the player has also gotten a uh, the same thing except that it's going to show basically every resource it has so it's going to show the hard drive space and RAM for uh, you know his whole collection and then this is the starting amount that the player starts with. Um, units also have the same thing. Um, 
let's look up the spider prefab here. So he costs hard drive and RAM space, and he costs 50 hard drive and 10 RAM. Um, so when it's initially queued up to be built, it'll deduct those resource amounts. So then when uh, so it doesn't get into trouble for when it is actually created on the battlefield. So let me show you what I've done because I've only just begun explaining the little economy that I've come up with, and it actually it has a lot of uh, a lot of bugs in it currently. Uh, actually, I didn't show you guys that that changed at all, so I'm gonna restart that. As annoying as it is, because I know it can take some times, it can take quite a while. Okay. So we got a building here. One is resource capable, one is not. This one is not, and this one is capable. So I'm just going to create a worker out of that, and it deducted uh, 50 hard drive from the amount that was up there. There was 100 there. So now if I click on the worker, and yes, I know the worker is about one and a half times bigger as a freaking building, but I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, I'll fix that later. That's not a big thing. So there's two. Um, two new actions that I've added. There's a harvest action and a return cargo action. Um, you can call either one and it'll actually start uh, the whole harvesting process. So if I click on harvest and then click on the, the mineral, or not mineral patch, I'm thinking of StarCraft again, uh, click on the hard drive patch, he'll go then go to the hard, hard drive patch for a delayed reaction and then he'll cast which will gather the resources from the patch and then he'll return the cargo back to the building and then once he's reached his cast uh, distance he will uh, do his cast which will set his resources that he's gathered to add to the players resources I don't have a, a RAM patch yet so I have I haven't tested the RAM patch but it should work the same as the hard drive patch right now he's only collecting five hard drive at a time uh, I'll, that actually kind of sounds weird gathering five hard drive at, the same, at a time I might just change it to bytes because that makes more sense but then you measure RAM in bytes so I, I'll, th I'll think about how I'm gonna m be measuring all this but yeah he'll just keep going there um, you know, forever and ever, because I don't have a resource amount set on this mineral or this patch either. Oh my god! So he'll just keep going forever, but we we don't want we don't uh, want to watch that. So I'm going to explain a little bit of the code that I've added into it. Uh, you guys know I've uh, I already told you I added the string and integer arrays so that I can store them into the hash table for um, the unit. Now the purpose that I'm using these for in the unit script is uh, the cost of them. So like it defines which mineral or which resource is being deducted from the player's amount. So these actually don't need a hash table to be stored in. Uh, the next thing that I've added that I actually didn't show you guys it's just an empty game object within the world and it's called game manager uh, it stores um, arrays that can be very useful because uh, to figure out which resource patch or building it should go to it it would it'd be easier if all of this was just stored in one place and it doesn't have to do this dynamic searching for it. It's a pretty simple search then, so it, it takes less uh, thought process for the system to do. So all I do is I'm storing the players in the game, the resources. Um, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna uh, keep using players. Uh, I might take that out, but uh, I store the resources, which is the, are the patches on the field and the resource buildings these are the buildings that can store resources so each of these has been put into arrays on start so in the building script all I've added is uh, to find the game manager and uh, add the resource building add its game object to the resource building array um, and then this also has the uh, 
allowed resources that can be stored there. Uh, I don't actually have checks put into place for the uh, unit to make sure that the building can actually store those resources. I'm not sure if I... I don't think I do. I'm not sure right now. It might just be... I think it's just a simple distance checker. But on start, if this building is resource capable, it's going to add itself to the game manager. And then uh, it's going to add the names allowed to the hash table. So later, I can check if the hash table easily contains this uh, string or key value that I've given it. So it's really simple to go and find if it can actually store this. So this way um, it's easy to just change out resources. So like if you want to name it something completely different or if you want to add a new resource, it's pretty simple to do. Um, so moving on to the uh, resource because there's really not much more uh, within the other scripts. So the resource script this is the script that is actually contained on the resource patch uh, it has the names it can it the name of the uh, resources it has stored there the amounts and then its resource hash table they all ha are gonna have a hash table so they can easily commute communicate with each of their hash tables so I do the same thing on start. It's just going to store all these values into the hash table by the key and value. And then it's going to add itself to the game manager. And then there's a simple function called gather resources. And all this is going to do is return its hash table. So when the unit goes to cast on the resource patch, he's going to call gather resources and that's going to set his resource table to the uh, resource patches table. So it's a simple uh, process of just setting this table equal to that table so later they, it can just uh, deduct or add the values actually from when the unit returns to the building. So our new actions that are doing all of this We'll start off with harvest because that's that feels to me like the first action you actually call to the uh, unit. So it's just going to have a couple of variables set its cast range, uh, whether it should multicast, which it should. It should tell all the units that you have uh, with harvest on to. It should just tell all of them. It doesn't need to find the best caster. Uh, cast delay, which you could think of as mining time. How long does it take it to mine the, the resource patch? And I have it set for four seconds. Uh, and then whether it should request a target. So if the action's clicked, it requests a target. Now, I've added a new function called find best target. I also have a function called find best casters. So these two kind of go in hand in hand. If you need to find a best caster, that's the unit you want to tell to do that action. When it finds the best target, it wants to find which one does it want, what unit does it want to go to, or what position does it want to go to, or something like that. So it's going to get the targets from the parameters that's been given, the, and then uh, it's going to try to find the shortest distance <coughs> from one of the buildings that it's been told to. To, uh, that it can go to. Uh, this is actually going to be changed a little bit later to try to implement a star because let's say uh, a building was closer to a mineral patch. Er, God, I keep saying mineral patch. I watch way too much StarCraft too. Um, say it's closer to a resource patch and but he actually has to take a longer path, but the distance from uh, you know A to B going straight to it is shorter. Well, that's going to cause issues because you want it to take the shortest path to the actual legitimate building. So I'm going to have to change that a little bit to account for more uh, differences uh, because all it's doing is finding the shortest distance right now. So it's going to set the cast target equal to that target and then set the cast position to that target's position. And then it's going to move to that cast position. 
and these are all uh it's really cool it's just, i mean most of this is just really built-in stuff that i've already written for uh the action script so it's really cool to see some of this stuff come together and really work and then uh if a, if the action's clicked it's going to do the same thing as m many of the other ones it's just going to check the player input and when it casts this is the really uh, cool part it's going to check if it is a resource because you don't want to harvest anything else doesn't need to it's going to set its resources equal to the uh, targets resources by gathering its resources and then um, it's going to store just uh, the name of the action that's going to be called and the resource buildings that it needs to search through to return that cargo so then it's going to get return cargo and f tell it to find the best target so this is how the cycle starts to begin he's gone and harvests the resources he's got the resources and now he's going to find the best target to return the cargo so we come over to return cargo and much like harvest it has a couple of things set up here cast range stuff like that and find best target is exactly the same as harvest so actually when I uh, later I I'm going to later put these actions under a separate action where I need to I uh, find the best target that's closest but also uh, certain a uh, aspects so it's basically just making sh so I don't have to rewrite a whole bunch of monotonous code for find best target I can just write you know good code I don't have to be a very well I guess it, you could say making a good way is the lazy way but writing monotonous code is actually the lazier way so uh, the only function that is different in this script from harvest is the cast function so it's gonna check if the uh, if the building actually contains uh, the resources that need to be dumped into it so the resources that it's collected from harvest it needs to search all of those and make sure every single one can be put into this building otherwise it just returns and does nothing now if it can store all those resources that it's been had us gathered it's going to uh, get the current amount from the player because you can't just do a simple plus equals uh, assignment here you have to t get the amount from the player get the amount from the each entry within the table which would be each resource amount and then just add the two together and set the uh, players resource back to that amount and I just I had some debugging stuff going on here and then I'm just going to start the cycle up again and call harvest and tell it to find the best target and that is about it actually uh, I don't have any more to really go over I think something that I could really uh, do to help this whole system is to turn the uh, rigid body off for when it's uh, gathering the resources so it's much like it's much like Starcraft 2 where you can uh, have a unit in the way of a um, harvesting harvesting uh, worker but they don't collide so it one puts less on the uh, computer because they're n it's not as many objects colliding with each other and I uh, it's really just mainly the collision I, I didn't really have two points going there I thought I had two points to go with the, uh, that whole talk there but no it didn't really happen so uh, that's about it guys uh, thank you for watching I hope I can get uh, some more work done on this because I, I really do enjoy uh, programming quite a bit and uh, I feel like I have started to get to the point where like I can start doing some really cool things with this game I just have to sit down start it because that is the hardest part is starting that has got to be the hardest part of everything is just starting once you're in it you're fine you can keep going with it so uh, 
that's about it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you next time